Leaders of a deeply divided group of seven leading industrial countries are meeting in the French resort city of Biarritz. President Donald Trump is out of step with the rest. Efforts to reach consensus look set to founder over thorny issues including global trade, climate change, and taxing the big technology companies. Divisions are so deep that for the first time in more than 40 years, there's to be no joint communique at the end of the G7 summit. And I'm joined now by DW's Georg Mattis in Biarritz. Georg, it's the first time since 1975 that there's going to be no communique at this summit. Why is that? I'd say really this is a precautionary measure that the French president has taken, a president here who's hosting the G7 and who is in damage control mode ever since President Donald Trump, the U.S. president, walked away from that final declaration at the last meeting in Canada. And so what the French president has done, he has really broadened the agenda. He has brought in all sorts of other topics like the environment, like development, unlike uh, injustice in the world in order uh, to, uh, if you want paper, over the rifts that are so clearly there when it comes to topics uh, like the environment, uh, the French, um, the, the, the Paris uh, Climate Accord, um, or for instance, the Iran nuclear deal, something that is very important to European partners here in the G7, but something that he walked away from. So they're going to be doing a lot of talking, but without a final communique or agreement for action, is there any point in meeting? Well, look, uh, the G7 has been around for, uh, for, for more than four decades, basically, and it is the forum uh, to organize international uh, trade. It is the forum uh, to organize international relations, if you want. This is where the rules, how this system that we're all living in is, has been hammered out. This is how uh, problems can mutually uh, be solved. And the French president is very keen to produce some sort of tangible results. And, and in his first meeting with President Donald Trump, he, he had some hope for optimism because because after all, Donald Trump said, uh, the weather is great, uh, there's very friendly people around, and there's great things that can be accomplished, and well, we'll have to see if that is true. Well, in the run-up to this meeting, the EU's trade pact with South America's Mercosur group uh, has been threatened if Brazil's government doesn't take action. Let's have a listen to what EU Council President Donald Tusk had to say earlier. The burning Amazon rainforest has become another depressing sign of our times. We, of course, stand by the EU-Mercosur agreement, which is also about protecting the climate and environment. But it is hard to imagine a harmonious process of ratification by the European countries as long as the Brazilian government allows for the destruction of the green lungs of planet Earth. Well, Georg, do you see the EU actually taking this kind of action against Brazil? It's a crucial role. It's very high uh, on their agenda. And uh, so that is why also the German foreign minister has emphasized that it is a real problem also looking towards that, that trade deal. Uh, Donald Tusk was also clear in, May, in saying that this uh, trade deal with the Mercosur states also will help the environment, but at the same time backing the French president. So yes, I would say, you know, the uh, Europeans have worked with the Mercosur states for uh, more than uh, two decades on that deal. If that paper lies a little longer on the table until these key problems are sorted out, uh, that is something that Europeans would be prepared to do. Okay, DW's Georg Mattis in Biarritz, thanks for that.